Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. I will call the 67th meeting of the National Advisory Council for Human Genome Research uh, meeting uh, to order. Uh, thank you all for coming. I uh, will point out this is the 67th meeting of this advisory council. It's actually the 10th meeting that I'm presiding over as NHGRI director, although it's only the ninth in-person one. My first one three years ago in February was actually a conference call because of a snowstorm that, that prevented us from actually having an in-person meeting. Um, I will also point out that the gentleman sitting to my left is the new executive secretary of uh, the advisory council, Rudy Pizzotti. Uh, almost all of you know Rudy. And we even gave you a head fake a few or a couple councils ago where he was called in from the bullpen at short notice to, to preside over council uh, for that one time, but now he is uh, the permanent executive secretary. So I'll turn this over to him for the initial set of announcements. Okay, thank you, Eric. Uh, let me remind everyone that uh, we're video casting the open session of the council meeting today. Uh, it will also be uh, archived, so your mistakes will live beyond you. <laughs> So before we begin uh, what will be my maiden voyage as the Executive Secretary of the Council, uh, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge my predecessor, uh, Mark Geyer. Uh, Mark has served as the Executive Secretary for 10 years. That's 30-some council meetings to arrange and organize. Having just gone through the experience myself, I can tell you it's a lot more work than simply arranging some flights to get you all be here at the same time in the same days. Um, if you do a little bit of math, uh, $350 million a year for 10 years, that's a lot of resources that has come before you and your predecessors here at the Council. Uh, go back 10 years, you're talking about the completion of the Human Genome Project, the ENCODE Project, the HapMap Project, uh, tons of technology development, lots and lots of common fund initiatives. I'll get myself in trouble if I try to recall every single valuable and important research uh, endeavor that's come to you. Uh, but suffice, suffice it to say it's a huge body of work and one that I think Mark can be proud of. So would you please take a moment and join me and thank Mark for 10 years of service to the Council. Uh, let's begin with uh, introductions. We have uh, new council members joining us today. Uh, Dr. Lon Carden is a Senior Vice President for Alternative Discovery and Development at GlaxoSmithKline. Among other responsibilities, he leads a group at GSK doing pharmacology modeling and simulation studies for drug development. Lon has also applied his statistical genetics expertise to gene discovery studies in complex diseases including asthma, diabetes, obesity, and many others. He's also had a leadership role in large multinational studies, including the Wellcome Trust Case Control Consortium and our own beloved HapMap project. Welcome, Lon. Uh, Dr. Joseph Ecker is professor of the Plant Molecular and Cellular Biology Laboratory and HHMI investigator at the Salk Institute for Biological Studies. Joe was one of the leaders of the international effort to map and sequence the genome of Arabidopsis. More recently, has been, he has studied the epigen epigenome in human and model organisms and the role of epigenetic modifications in regulating processes such as cellular development and carcinogenesis. Welcome, Joe. Uh, Dr. Howard Jacob is professor and director of the Human and Molecular Genetics Center of the Medical College of Wisconsin and vice chair for research at Children's Hospital of Wisconsin. Howard has a long history of applying genomic technologies in the rat model organism to the study of complex disorders such as renal disease, diabetes, hypertension, and myocardial infarction. He's been PI of the Rat Genome Database, a resource that has served the scientific community for many, many years. And more recently, Howard has begun to apply high throughput sequencing in the clinical setting to discover genetic variants involved in human disease. Welcome, Howard. Dr. Lucila Ono Machado is Professor of Medicine and Chief of the Division of Bio Biomedical Informatics at the University of San Diego. As a principal investigator in the IDASH consortium, Lucila has broad expertise in medical informatics and the analysis of multiple data types. She conducts multidisciplinary research focused on biomedical pattern recognition in large data sets. And she is involved in policy work surrounding data access and privacy issues. And Lucilla also has strong interest in informatics training, both in the U.S. and in international settings. Welcome, Lucilla. Dr. Robert Nussbaum 
is Professor and Chief of Genomic Medicine at the University of California, San Francisco. Bob has a longstanding interest in applying genetic and genomic approaches to mapping diseases in, in humans, particularly in neurodegenerative disorders. As a geneticist who provides service to patients, Bob is also interested in questions surrounding the return of genetic findings to patients and developing information resources relevant to clinical genomics. Welcome home, Bob. Artie Rye is the Elvin R. Laddie Professor of Law at Duke University Law School. Artie is an expert in intellectual property law and health policy law. She has conducted research on IP issues in biotechnology and the pharmaceutical industries. In 2009-2010, Artie served as the administrator of the Office of External Affairs at the U.S. PTO and conducted analysis work that was seminal to subsequent pat patent law reform and she has served on President-elect Obama's transition team in 2008-2009 to review the USPTO. Welcome, Artie. <coughs> we also have two special ad hoc council members joining us for just this meeting. Dr. Joanne Boffman is Senior Vice Chancellor at the University System of Maryland, where she oversees the 12 institutions that comprise the entire University of Maryland system. Prior to her current position, Joanne was Executive Vice President of the American Society of Human Genetics for a number of years. She was the council liaison for ASHGH, ASHG, and she has served for me on many, many peer review panels. Always good to see you, Joanne. Dr. Pilar Osario is Associate Professor of Law and Bioethics at the University of Wisconsin Law School, where she teaches courses on intellectual property, patent law, and torts. Pilar is an LC grantee, a former council member for NHGRI and a former standing study section member of the LC peer review panel that served both CSR and NHGRI. Nice to have you, Pilar. We have several new employees at NHGRI that we're going to introduce to the council. Would you please stand when I call your name? Dr. Michael Smith. Mike is in the Division of Genomic Science in the Extramural Research Program. Mike comes to us from NCI Intramural Research. He has a wealth of experience using genomic technologies for biomedical studies, and he will be working in our portfolio of grants related to technology development. Nicole Lockhart. Nicole is in the Division of Genomics and Society. She also comes to us from NCI. She has experience working on research issues related to biorepositories, data access, and ethical questions about the use of biological samples. I'm sure she'll be called upon to do a little of everything in the LC program. Nick Giacomo. Nick is a new program analyst and he'll be splitting his time working on the Undiagnosed Diseases Program and the Human Microbiome Project. Steve Benowitz. Steve is a new member of the Communications and Public Liaison staff in the Division of Policy, Communications and Education. He will cover news and media requests for the Extramural Research Program. He's written on genomics for NCI, the American Society of Clinical Oncology, and John Hopkins University. Chris Donahue. Chris is also in the communications branch of DCPE, and he'll lead the effort to archive documents about NHGRI's scientific legacy. Chris is also working on his doctoral degree at the University of Maryland. Uh, Christina Dalton. Christina is a new education outreach specialist in the education and community involvement branch of DPCE. Thank you, Christina. We would like to welcome our council liaisons, Ellen Giarelli from the International Society of Nurses and Genetics, James O'Leary from the Genetic Alliance, Rhonda Schoenberg from the National Society of Genetic Counselors, and Mike Watson from the American College of Medical Genetics. Uh, welcome all of you and thank you for joining us today. We also have a couple of uh, guests in attendance, uh, Tabitha Hendershot and Mario Renato at uh, Nursing Research. Thank you for joining us. Uh, is there anyone else that's attending that failed to be snagged at the sign-in sheet at the front desk? If you're courageous enough to stand up and go to a microphone, introduce yourself. Okay, let's uh, move on to the uh, meeting minutes from the last council round. Um, at this time, I'd like to ask the council if there are any corrections or additions to the September 2012 council minutes. If none, can I have a motion to accept the minutes? 
So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Anyone possibly opposed to approving the minutes? Thank you. Uh, let me call your attention to the future meeting dates. It's on the open session agenda. If we haven't done so already, uh, Comfort will send an email to all of you and your administrative assistants. These are dates that uh, carry us two years hence to February of uh, 2015. And uh, please put them on, the, on your calendar when you get that message. And with that, I'm ready to turn this over to Eric for the director's report. 